Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample questions discussion. We are talking about the set B of our mock papers and we have covered so far the chapter 1 and chapter 2 sample questions and it's time for us to step into the chapter 3. Just for your kind information again, the chapter 3 will be having 5 questions out of 40 and yet contributing efficiently to the overall scores what you can get in order to pass your examination. So this chapter, again, a quick reminder, is all about static testing and reviews. So you must be recalling all the concepts before you start looking at each of these sample questions and understand them. So the very first question of this particular chapter is question number 14. Which of the following statements correctly reflects the value of static testing? Now, Sometimes the things are a little complicated and sometimes it can confuse you literally saying that is that the right answer for this question or not because uh, we learned some different concepts about it. So before I talk about it, let us go with the options through and see that which is the correctly talking about the static testing as a concept. So A, it says by introducing reviews, right, we have found that both the quality of the specification and the time required for development and testing have increased. Now if you see, if you start following the statements very soothly at the end, one word changes the meaning of the entire statement. Early testing saves time and money is one of our principle and it says that if static testing is in place, if you conduct reviews, much earlier in the life cycle, it saves your time and money and further, you know, the time required for development and testing would reduce, not increase. So entire statement is correct, but just last word, which is saying increase, it should be decreased. That's where the option A is incorrect. B, using static testing means we have better control and cheaper defect management due to ease of detecting defects later in the life cycle. Now, where, the way I'm putting the effort or, you know, pressurizing on a particular word here, like later. Now, reviews are conducted earlier in the life cycle. If you say later, it is dynamic testing, not static testing. So later is again a wrong word being used here. So you, you try to understand the trickiness, right? That if you do not pay attention to each and every word, your answers can be much confusing. That's where you come back to me and tell me that, oh, I was sure about the reviews and the static testing, but the options were looking so confusing. The answer was you did not read each and every word carefully. So that's where it's not later in the life cycle, it's earlier. So the B is also ruled out. Looking at C, now that we require the use of static analysis. Now, this is where I was saying that sometimes it can be conflicting saying that oh did you not ask me a question on static testing right now and now you're telling me in the option static analysis oh that's not an option at all no that's just a trick because static analysis is a part of static testing when the static testing is done with help of tools and it is mainly done for design and code or especially for code because doing uh, evaluation and review of uh, you know probably like 1000 lines of code manually could be difficult plus not beneficial at all so you prefer to make use of a tool like compiler to quickly scan the code and tell you the syntax issues and that's what you call it as static analysis and it is not different than static testing it's just a part of static testing which is called differently because you use a tool there but if you do without the tool you call it as static testing that's it so people will say now i should opt out c and d and pick anything from a and b or none of the options are correct. Now, static analysis is a part of static testing. So if you see C, it says now that we require the use of static analysis, missed requirements have decreased and communication between the tester and developers have improved. Absolutely correct. But that's done by static testing, not by static analysis, because static analysis is mainly for the code and design, not for the requirements. That's where C is also wrong. But let's look at D. Since we started using static analysis, we find coding defects that might have been not found by performing only dynamic testing. Straightforward. None of the words are conflicting. None of the statements are tricky. But yes, you have to pay attention to the other options in order to get highlighted with the right answer. 
So the right answer here is D. Since we started using static analysis, we find coding defects that might have not been found by performing only dynamic testing. Let's look at the next question here, question number 15. And here we're talking about which of the following statement on the use of checklist in a formal review is correct. And of course, you need to recall your understanding about the checklist-based testing uh, as a technique and also from the formal review that checklist is one of the component of it. Uh, option A says, as a part of review planning, the reviewers create the checklist needed for the review. Now, it's created much earlier, okay? It's an organization level document or product specific document, which is not created by the reviewers. Reviewers make use of checklist in order to review the document. So checklist is a predefined thing, not during the review process. Uh, it's not created during the review process. So A is ruled out. B, as a part of the issue communication phase, the reviewers will fill in the checklist provided for the review. No, if checklist is being used in your review process, the time for utilizing is the independent preparation or individual preparation where reviewers go through the document by keeping checklist on the other side of it. So it's not during issue communica communications, it's uh, basically a bit earlier which is the previous phase, individual preparation. C, as a part of review meeting, the reviewers create defect report based on the checklist provided for the review. Uh -huh. The right answer is again, like the individual review phase is where you make use of checklist, just like B. And D, as a part of review initiation, the reviewers receive the checklist needed for the review. Absolutely correct. This is a statement which meets the expectation of utilizing checklist as a part of the review. During initiate review, okay, that's the phase, second number, of, after planning, the second phase is initiate review. And at this point, the moderator will be distributing the documents to you. And one of that document will also be the checklist if we have decided to make use of it, right? And this is a appropriate option. So the right answer here again is D, as a part of review initiation, which is initiate review phase, the reviewers receive the checklist needed for the review. All right, moving into the next top, next question here, question number 16. Which of the following correctly matches the roles and responsibility in a formal review process? In order to answer this question, you have to be thorough with your syllabus and the content which we have discussed in our tutorials, right? Um, you probably don't need a justification for this. And there's no justification. It's just a straightforward mapping of uh, what role has what kind of responsibilities. So here, if you see, we got four options. Manager decides on execution of reviews. Review leader ensures effective running of the review meetings. So scribe fixes the defect in the work product under review or D, moderator monitors ongoing cost effectiveness. Now, moderator is not responsible for monitoring the cost effectiveness, ongoing cost effectiveness, that is done by the manager, so D is wrong. Scribe fixes the defect, of course not. Scribe is there to make the notes of review report, but fixing the defect is responsibility of the author of the document or the work product. B, review leader ensures effectiveness running of the review meeting, no, it's moderator. Okay, so B, C, D are all wrong. The right answer here is A, manager is the one who decides the execution of the reviews during the planning phase in order to decide what will happen, how it will happen, who will be participating, and as a part of it also decides on the overall execution of reviews. So that's pretty much for today's tutorial team. We just covered three questions from this chapter and we have two more coming up next in the other tutorial following this. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.